So I'm here with uh, two wonderful people. And uh, I'm actually here to talk about our foundation, Revitalize Pearls with Purpose Educational Foundation, and uh, have a conversation with a couple of awesome artists. So can you tell me a little bit about yourselves and your art? I'm Don Sincone, and I've been a professional artist since 1961, and my art is a style that I was blessed to develop that is pretty much my identity. I paint everything. So when I'm asked, uh, what do I paint? I simply answer by saying, I'm an artist. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> 1961, wow, that's a long time. Yeah, yeah. Awesome, mm -hmm. awesome. So. You want to tell me a little bit about yourself? All right, I was just thinking, that's just like one year before I was born. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now you guys, since you know what year I was born, I'm going to tell you where I was born. I was born in New Orleans, Louisiana, and I've been an artist most of my life. I doodle when, from the time I could pick up a pencil, I would do in, in school and at the house as a child, but art has always been in my blood. It's It's been, it's been in my DNA since I guess the day I was born because I love colors, I love to draw, and it was something that was embedded in me, embedded in me since I was a child. But I've been studying art under Donson County for about 35 years now. Wow. And I, I, I would like to think that I'm getting better as an artist. <laughs> um, I use my God given artistic talent as a vehicle to convey meaningful, enlightened messages of hope through my work and a conversation between my work and the view. And that would be all of the observers of our work. Awesome, awesome. Thank you. Well, I'm looking around the room and I see, wow. I mean, I'm not an art critic by any means, but uh, these paintings are amazing. Thank and you. I especially like this one. I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> it, it has it, a lot it, of meaning. Yeah, it can't be because of the colors. Huh? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, this one looks very special. Uh, you want to tell me a little bit about it? Um, yes. The painting was, is inspired, first of all, by what this lady represents. And uh, first vice president elect to the United States of America, uh, vice president Kamala Harris. And in during the painting, I worked from several different photographs, her hands, from one area, part of a body is from another and throughout the piece. And this was after she had become vice president. And, and I wanted to put her in that Washington setting, mm -hmm. but I was not led to put her in the obvious political setting. And it was springtime, and what better place to put her but among cherry those blossoms. beautiful uh, cherry blossoms that the Japanese gave this country. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's where she is. I, I call the painting Hail to Women. Awesome. Yeah, and this is a celebration of all women, but most especially the sisters and that being said is because growing up from the 30s through that um, times that my life has spanned it not knowing 
with my grandmothers and aunts and my own mother were dealing with and didn't really know that until I probably was well along in my teens before I realized what women were going through and particularly black women. And as I grew older, um, that became more of a focus in my life. One of the first significant things that I caught, caught on to was the fact that at least 85% of my formal education had come from women. Yeah. And the other thing is black women in particular, um, I don't have a word for what black women mean. And, and I don't just mean to me as a person. I'm talking about to the world mm -hmm. and to this country. I venture to say that had it not been for black women, um, we wouldn't have this country mm -hmm. because there would be no democracy. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we are facing that kind of thing again, black women are in the forefront of saving this country and people are understanding that, thank God, finally. So that's really what's behind this, the significance of uh, a lot of symbolism is in here and the, uh, the way she's waving her hands and uh, carrying a uh, release in the other hand and the birds that you see here symbolic of the seven spirits of God, mm -hmm. which are mentioned in the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. And so she's guided in that respect. And the trees all around her are cheering her on. And the, she talked a great deal when she was running for president about uh, the little girl that she had come from, how her mother had brought her up and so I have a little girl riding a bicycle and there are ballerinas in pots throughout the piece here so that's what's going on here and of course the colors mm -hmm. I mean of course. Didn't have, yeah I didn't have to force anything because that's the natural colors of springtime in yeah. Washington <laughs> There are also the natural colors of a certain sorority. Oh, okay. and we're really, really, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I see it now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you see it now. <laughs> awesome. awesome. I watched the evolution of that painting when you were working on it in the beginning. You started out with these uh, impressionistic uh, and pastel techniques. So mm -hmm. talk a little bit about the technique with that palette knife. I think that's getting lost in your in your artwork that that mm -hmm. people don't realize. Um, technique um, is significant to every work of art, and the the approach that I'm working from here. Um, I came to a broader understanding of that when I was uh, blessed to be stationed in Germany in part of my service in the Army Medical Corps and traveled throughout Europe and studied art while I was over there. And <clears throat> so I was exposed to European art from Denmark all the way into Italy and seeing all of the movements, all of the schools. And fundamentally, they came about uh, from very much the same concept um, from the caveman uh, drawing and the marks and all of that. So the 
come into what, what you're speaking to there in particular. Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It, it, it could be edited, right? Okay, yeah. yes. Okay, and and uh, and back to what you were saying. And the reason I asked you that question mm -hmm. is exactly what you're saying because I want to educate our people as to what goes into these paintings and what makes them more than just aesthetically valuable. Mm -hmm. Valuable. Okay. So that's that's where exactly where yeah. I wanted to go. Okay. Yes. All right. Now are we still filming? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right. So, so the fundamentals of the technique that I use is in everything that I do, mm -hmm. and the use of a palette knife is a natural uh, extension of my own hands, the same as the brush and anything else. Mm -hmm. And the, 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 uh, the palette knife is not used because it's a palette knife. I'm not doing it to uh, do a palette knife technique. I, I'm not even certain I understand what that means, any more so than I understand what it means, uh, brush technique. I know what the results is. Mm -hmm. And as for, I use the palette knife where only that kind of a tool can produce that effect. So everything yeah. about art has to do with effect. And yeah. the, the, the question is, does it work? It isn't right or wrong. The question is, does it work? Yes. Is it harmonically balanced? Is all these other things that make up uh, the idea of composition? So that's how they, and the same use of the color. Mm -hmm. Because the, the color that I'm dealing with here is, is not only coming from the Impressionistic time, but also from the Renaissance and right. uh, even further back than that. So we have um, at our fingertips a wealth of understanding. Right. And, and this is what, when people come to view art, um, don't limit yourself about thinking about whether it's abstract or some other school that we talk about, it, there is no painting that is not abstract. Exactly. Yes. Right. And see, and what we're, what we're focusing on is educating our people and those of us who are not really used to uh, observing art. So we've been studying it all of our lives. And a lot of times the question might come up as to value, as what is the value of a work of art, or one of your works of art as opposed to one of mine. And that is one of the most challenging things that we face on a regular basis. Now, what I want to say is you looking at uh, over 115 years worth of experience between right. me and I right. working in art. And we still, in most cases, a lot of cases, have to explain the value of our artwork. So, which is sometimes kind of get a little frustrating. But if we do our part, like we're doing now, so if the people will see it, then they understand that what you're looking at here, and it's just a, a, a tiny bit of what we have collectively, we have a gallery that can compete anywhere, anywhere in the world, just mm -hmm. about. We just left. Crystal Bridges in Arkansas this weekend.